What is going on everybody, Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about one trade that I made today on the 28th of January in 2019. We're also going to be looking at some other earnings reports to keep an eye on, some other economic data that's coming out this week and talking about some other companies that you know fluctuated heavily today on the 28th of January. So before we do get into this guys, let's try and get this video to 50 likes. So smash that like button. I really do appreciate it. If you guys do smash that like button, it helps the channel grow. And without further ado, let's talk about what happened today in the stock market. So the SPX guys closed the day down around $20.91, down around 0.8%. The NASDAQ actually fell the most today out of the three major indices, down around 90 points, down around 1.3%. And the Dow Jones guys closed the day down around 208 points, down around 0.84%. So this morning, guys, we saw a huge drop in the overall markets, we can see the big gap down from the SPX, um, you know, the S&P 500. It closed the day on Friday at around 26.64, ended up opening the day today at around 26.44, sold off all the way to around 26.24. So at the low of the day, guys, we were down around 1.5% in terms of the S&P 500. And from there, you know, we made higher low, higher high patterns, closing off the day in a nice little upswing. But for those of you all out there that were paying attention to earnings reports today, we saw that Caterpillar, ticker symbol CAT, they ended up missing their expectations and cutting their profits for the year of 2019. We also got news out of NVIDIA that they cut down their earnings estimates or their revenue estimates rather from $2.7 billion down to $2.2 billion, right? Massive cut. I believe it was around an 18 to 20% cut in terms of their revenue guidance for this upcoming year, right? And this ended up sending down a lot of the semiconductors. We saw AMD was down a lot today. We saw Micron fell down quite a bit early on in the day, but ended up closing the gap. And of course, NVIDIA, this stock got absolutely pummeled today, guys. It was down to around $124 after this news came out, or $131 rather. But, you know, it fell nearly 18% at one point in the day. That's how low it was. It was down 18%, guys. So in terms of, you know, NVIDIA, the semiconductors, I do believe there's going to be more, um, you know, downside to those particular stocks due to, you know, Apple cutting down their revenues. And obviously, Apple is one of the biggest semiconductor um, users, right, in the world. And of course, you know, just in general, guys, semiconductors have been weak over the past couple of months. This is not news to us. So let's get right back here to the SPX, guys, to see, you know, what's going on on a technical basis here. So today, like I said, guys, down around 0.8%. We're still trading below below that 180 day uh, simple moving average here, which has been a resistance for the SPX over the past couple of months. We've been talking about this in pretty much every single video that I've been making recently. We can see the resistance here back in the middle of October, back in the beginning of November, and back in the beginning of December were three separate occasions that we got rejected by that 180 SMA. This past week, we got rejected on the 18th of January. We had two straight days of red back last week, right? And today, again, guys, with the gap down that we saw, we saw some missed uh, you know, earnings from some big Big companies. NVIDIA cut the guidance. Obviously, NVIDIA is also a very big company, and this ended up sending down the markets, right? The markets ended up going down today, again, getting rejected by that 180-day simple moving average. So in terms of that resistance, guys, Everything is still intact that we are getting rejected by that resistance here on the 180 chart. And if we're taking a look on this 20-day, one-hour chart here in terms of the SPX, we ended up breaking that uh, support of the 50 SMA that I've been talking about over the past couple of days, guys. We saw 
that we topped off here at a higher high at around 26.75. We pulled back to around 26.21, got rejected again by that same uh, resistance at around 26.75, and we ended up breaking below the 50 SMA today, which is a very good sign that we are slowly heading down. And of course, a double top is a bearish formation for an effort, you know, any index, any stock any ETF future, right? This is a very bearish move. And the fact that we did break that does give me, uh, you know, hopes that we are headed back to the $2,600 level, maybe back to the $2,500 level in terms of the SPX. So now that we're talking about the SPX, let's just take a look at some earnings reports to keep an eye out for the rest of this week. I'm pretty much going to be talking about this briefly in every single video to keep you guys in the loop with these companies. So today, Today. These are the big ones that we saw tomorrow. We have Apple, AMD, Verizon, Pfizer, eBay. Wednesday, we have Facebook, Alibaba, Microsoft, Tesla, PayPal, McDonald's, Visa. Thursday, we have Amazon, General Electric, UPS, Altria. Those are some of the big ones. And on Friday, we have Exxon, Chevron, Merck, Honeywell, Sony, Cigna. Those are some of the big ones on Friday. So this week, guys, one of the biggest weeks in this quarter in terms of earnings, guys. The biggest companies in the entire world are reporting. So like I've been saying, it's going to be a pretty volatile week this week and this whole entire month, guys. Because for all you that don't know, March 1st is the deadline that we need to reach a trade war agreement with the president of China, right? Donald Trump and the president of China have set an agreement that they're going to find a trade war solution by March 1st. Is it going to happen? We don't know, guys. We don't know. But, you know, there is a chance that it could happen. And if it does not happen, I think that's going to be very bad for the stock market. We're going to be heading back down to the lows that we saw a couple weeks back if there is no agreement, you know, in my personal opinion. So, Let's check out the Dow Jones, guys, and see what's, what it's doing in terms of a technical analysis here. So let, unlike, you know, the SPX, guys, the Dow Jones did not double top here. It hit a high of 24,700, hit another high at around 24,800. So the uptrend in terms of this 20-day, one-hour chart for the Dow Jones is technically still intact, right? We're holding this trend line here as a support level from the low of the day today at around 24,300, but we are not trading above this 50 SMA, guys. This is gonna be a resistance that we're gonna have to break above for the Dow Jones to continue the downtrend. But let's say tomorrow, guys, let's say, right, we break the support at around 24,300. Let's say we have another red day tomorrow. Apple, some of the big companies start to report their earnings and they're not doing as great as expected, which is something that we already know since they already cut their revenue guidance. Let's say this drops this, uh, you know, the overall markets again. I think that this is going to break the support and we're going to be headed back into that downtrending, um, you know, formation that we've been in, you know, not really that we've been in over the past couple of weeks, but you know, the same kind of formation that we saw back in October through that sell-off and obviously in December, guys, right, where we saw a couple of weeks of selling off. I think that is possible if the big companies report bad earnings, that's going to send the stock market down in my personal opinion. So on the 20-day hour, one-hour chart, that's what I'm looking at in terms of the Dow. You know, this five-day chart not really telling us too much here other than the fact that we held above that $24,300 support level. And in terms of the 180 chart here, just like the SPX guys, we're trading below the 180 SMA, which has been a resistance over the past couple of months in terms of the Dow Jones. So let's take a look at the NASDAQ, which is currently still falling because these are the futures, guys. And when we started recording this video, we were down around 89 points. Now we're down around 93 points. So the selling continues after the bell in terms of this NASDAQ. And just like the SPX, guys, we see a double top formation here in terms of the NASDAQ on the 180 chart here. We can see 
Strong resistance at around $6,815. We topped off here for the higher high. We did not pass it again here, meaning that it's a double top, bearish formation, right? And now we're testing that support at around $66.50 ish, right? Right around here is a very strong support for the NASDAQ. So keep an eye on that, guys. Tomorrow, let's say we sell off strong, right? Apple does very poorly, whatever. You know, the stocks start to sell off. I think if we break that support right which is very possible if we do end up selling off tomorrow pretty heavily you know that's going to be sending us back into that sell-off stage back into that bearish pattern that we saw back in october and of course back in december of 2018 so judging off the 20 day one hour chart we can see exactly what i just said on a little bit of a closer basis right we're not trading in this channel anymore we double topped that around 68.20 and now we're heading down testing that support at around 66.50 so keep an eye on these levels guys in terms of the overall markets and of course those earnings reports that i showed you guys just a couple of minutes ago now before we do talk about what trade i made today i just want to let you guys know some other key economic situations economic dates that you guys want to keep an eye out for this week and i have it right here on my phone i'm going to read off very quickly what you guys got to keep an eye out for. So this Wednesday, there's a monetary policy meeting. Are the interest rates going to hike up again like they did last month? Probably not, right? Because the Fed was talking about how they're going to ease up in 2019 in terms of raising their interest rates. They said there's probably going to be around two interest rate hikes in 2019, and there was obviously more in the year of uh, 2018. Another thing to keep an eye out for, guys, in terms of the economy is the jobs report. That is this Friday from the Labor de labor Department, guys. This is going to be another huge, huge economic factor to keep an eye on that can have a sway on the entire market along with the earnings and, of course, what the Fed monetary policy meeting is going to, you know, come to a conclusion about, right? Those are very important things to keep an eye out for this week. And now let's talk about what I personally traded today on the 28th of January in 2019. Before we take a look at some other stocks, ETFs that did very well today and some others that, you know, gapped down as well. So I personally traded, I'm sure you guys can guess it, TVIX. This is pretty much my go-to ETF whenever the markets are selling off pretty much, right? Because this one tracks the SPX very closely, right? And whenever the SPX, also known as the S&P 500, is selling off, right? TVIX is going up and we can clearly see that, right? Like we saw in the beginning of this video, the S&P 500 gapped down from the close on Friday and this obviously gapped up, right? We closed we closed at around $44. We ended up gapping up to around $47. So where did I end up trading this today, guys? I personally got in on the second pullback or rather the first pullback that we see here, right? We can see you know, all the way up to around 1015, the SPX was selling off pretty heavily, right? Like we, like we can see, we opened up at 2644, ended up selling off to around 2629. And typically, guys, not always, but typically, when the markets sell off very heavily in the beginning of the day, right? We typically see a little bit of a push back up, right? A little bit of a push back up to put some more buying power into the markets, right? This is exactly what ended up happening today. And this is honestly what I was waiting for, right? Because I didn't want to get into TVIX when the markets were already down around 1% here, right at the beginning of the market, because I was anticipating a push back up. Because like I said, guys, I whenever I study the markets, usually, not always, but usually we do see a push back up. And that's exactly what we ended up getting. And at this point, I wanted to see if we were going to start trending back down and exactly you know that's what ended up happening right at around 10 30 is when we started to trend back down and this is when i started to scale into my tvix position and guys like i always preach you know be patient wait for opportunities to open up to you don't rush into a trade right at 9 30 a.m or whenever the market opens up in your time zone don't rush into trades guys you have to take calculated positions have your managed uh, risk, right? Manage your risk and understand 
you know, when a good opportunity is presenting itself to you. Because when you're, you know, beginner out there, you know, a lot of times you can get faked out by the stock market, meaning that you think it's a good opportunity, you slowly start to jump in, and then you get rejected heavily, and obviously it goes against you, right? Meaning, you know, you have to wait for the 100% confirmation and wait for that opportunity to open up to you, right? This is what I personally did today. We slowly started to sell off pretty heavily, right? Like I said, did not want to get in due to the heavy sell off. And then once we started to push back up, like I anticipated, all I wanted to see was a slow, slow push back down. And that's what we started to get. So that's what I ended up getting into TVIX at around 1030. And we could see how it correlates here on this chart, right? I wanted to see if it was going to hold the 180 SMA. Obviously, when the markets are were selling off more, you know, TVIX had no problem holding that 180 SMA on the one day, one minute. Ended up getting in right around here at $48 and sold off roughly at around $49.05, guys. This was a very quick trade. I pretty much just wanted to fill the gap that was opened here from the sell-off, right? Meaning that the resistance when we started the sell-off here was set at around $49.50. We started to sell off, like I said, when the SPX started to push back up. And then when the SPX started to sell down, right? Started to push down in price. That gap from, from TVIX, that gap in TVIX was slowly starting to fill. And this is where I wanted to make my profit. So from around $48, guys, up to around $49.05. Let's see how much profit I grabbed from this trade. So we can see, you know, I made around 2% on this trade in terms of TVIX. And I always preach to keep your, you know, keep your goal for the day conservative. Don't try to hit that home run trade every single day. The best way to trade is to keep it conservative and keep it consistent, guys. The two C's, conservative, consistent, conservative, consistent. This is the way that you build your trading account, build your wealth over time. If you try to hit the home run trades every single time, sure, you'll make 20% one day. But guess what? The next day, if you try to hit a home run trade, let's say you're trading penny stocks or some other volatile, you know, assets, whatever, you can lose 15% the next day without proper risk management, right? Which a lot of beginners out there don't have proper risk management. That's why a lot of people end up blowing up their accounts when they're trading stocks to start out, right? So that's pretty much what I ended up doing today in terms of, um, you know, TVIX. And I do expect more blood in the water over these next couple of days. I do expect more selling, meaning that I'm going to be trading TVIX probably this entire week, guys, right? To be completely honest with you guys, if the market does end up going away, I think it's going to go every single day. I'm going to be hopping in and out of TVIX like I did here today and like I was back in December and back in October and a little bit in November when the markets were extremely volatile, selling off like crazy pretty much every single day. So let's talk about very quickly, some other, you know, ETFs and stocks that did very well or poorly today. So clearly, you know, Caterpillar guys, like I said in the beginning of this video, they reported earnings not too great. Their profit guidance was cut for this year. They dropped a sizable amount. Let's talk about two other stocks that did very well today that I track, which are marijuana stocks, guys. And let me tell you something. I did not think Cron was going to reach these levels, guys, but I was mistaken, right? I said, like I said a couple of videos back, I was planning on doing a put option on Cron. Thank the lords that I did not place that trade because I would have placed it right around here at around, I think it was at like $15 when I was thinking about it. We shot up all the way to nearly $19 today, guys, in Cron, ticker symbol C-R-O-N. And if you guys traded this one out there, congrats, guys. 15% day in Cron, absolutely ridiculous. I know a lot of people, I think there was a couple people actually in the group chat that were talking about this one in particular. And another one, 
CGC, not nearly as good of a day as Kron, but still a very solid day. 5%, $2.29 on the day today in terms of CGC. Keeping an eye on the $50 to $55 level, I want to see, honestly, is it going to break out, maybe uptrend into the $60 range like Kron broke into new highs? Is CGC going to do that same thing? Maybe, possibly, right? Anything is possible with these marijuana stocks. They are very, very volatile, right? We all know this. And uh, let's take a look at some other ones. MU ended up selling off very heavily today and then filled the gap in a matter of like an hour, guys, hour and a half. So if you guys were able to trade MU today on this gap fill, let me know. This was a very, very solid play today. And AMD as well, just like NVIDIA, guys, this one tanked. Pretty heavily from $21.70 all the way down to $20. And it didn't end up filling the gap like MU, but it ended up pushing back up to around $21. So if you guys were able to catch this trade, let me know down below in the comments section and let me know about any other stocks, ETFs that you guys personally traded today. I would love to know about that. So before I do end off this video, I want to talk about the gold futures very quickly and tell you guys why I see strong potential in JNUG moving forward. So we saw the bounce on the 180 SMA for the gold futures, right? And the important thing I want to talk to you guys about very quickly is the fact that we broke this resistance at around $1,300, which we've been talking about over the past couple of weeks in terms of the gold futures. We broke above it, we consolidated, and now we're bouncing above it, treating it as a new support level. So this level, guys, at $1,300, could be the level where the gold futures end up running up to 1310, 1315, 1320, you know, up another 2 3% at least in my personal opinion. And let's say we do end up doing that, you know, I think JNUG is going to be a fantastic play, guys. I think JNUG, which is the bull ETF to gold, excuse me, is going to be a very solid play if gold ends up riding into the $1,300 level. So in terms of profit, guys, you know, we could potentially see a slight pullback. Who knows? But from here, guys, up to 1050 that offers a 4% margin <coughs> in terms of, um, you know, JNUG. So, you know, what I'm watching tomorrow, guys, very simple. I'm looking to see, you know, to see whether or not we're going to be trading off more, selling off more, opening up that opportunity in TVIX. I also want to see, you know, potentially playing short-term puts against some of the larger companies that we talked about earlier on in this video, just in case they end up selling off, right? Another great way to hedge a position, especially your long-term positions, is playing put options against them, right? Meaning you'll profit on the downside if there's downside, right? And you'll be able to put money into your long-term portfolio by buying more shares, you know, once that stock ends up falling down with the profits that you made from the put option, right? So that's one thing I'm planning on doing if the technicals are pointing to that. And of course, if the market perceives their earnings reports negatively, right? This is very, very important. I want to wait and wait till see, to see, you know, what the companies report before placing any put option trades. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Smash that like button. Let's get this video to 50 likes. I appreciate you guys to the fullest. Peace out.